This time on Distant Shores, we update you on the build of our 49-foot aluminum expedition sailboat and answer some of the questions we've had about the project. We're Cheryl and Paul Shard, hosts of the Distant Shores Sailing Adventure TV series. We've been cruising and living aboard for 33 years, documenting the sailing lifestyle. Join us for the building of our fifth boat, a custom aluminum Orion 49. The build started with the plates being cut out in early May in the Netherlands. Then on May 24th, I did the ceremonial first weld before the professionals took over and put the hull together upside down. Nearby, the deck and cockpit were assembled right way up as separate structures. Then when the hull was ready, it was turned right way up at the end of September. Next, the cockpit was added and the last major piece, the cabin superstructure, put into place. Welcome to Distant Shores. Hello, everybody. Actually, we are aboard Times Remembered. Which is a Southerly 42 mm -hmm. here in the gorgeous Chesapeake Bay, which you see out the windows. And this is a friend's beautiful Southerly shallow draft boat. We had a 42 with Distant Shores number one. Yes. RST just like this and we've had a just had a fabulous week sailing around the Chesapeake to some of our favorite places and to some new places we've never been before too so watch for that coming up. And this week is a question and answer. We wanted to do a Q&A because we've been getting a lot of questions about the new aluminum boat. Mm -hmm. I wanted to answer questions of those that we've been getting on our Patreon feed. So the first question is, why did you choose an aluminum sailboat or an aluminum sailboat? So the main reason I guess we chose it was for the strength. We're planning to cruise up into the high latitudes mm -hmm. for the first time in our cruising career. We got as far as Bergen, which was around 60 degrees north, but this will take us to nearly 80 degrees north up to Svalbard and there's the chance of ice. So aluminum is well known as the best way to build an expedition type boat that can handle that. That was probably our first uh, reason for the aluminum boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just felt it would be more secure at sea with the strength of the boat. And um, also aluminum is very customizable. And we've been cruising for 33 years now. We know what we like and there's things that we wanted that we haven't been able to find in a production boat. And aluminum is brilliant because it's very easy to change. Some of the customizations we've done for the new boat are uh, the hull itself. When you make a fiberglass boat, they're always made with a hull mold and then all the boats will have the exact same hull. In this case, there was a production pre-production prototype of the Orion has been built. Um, but we were wanting to have a little bit more weight aft in the boat and therefore you need to expand the hull sections aft of the boat. Improve the buoyancy at the stern. That will improve the buoyancy mm -hmm. and let it float properly with a solar arch on and uh, just get it floating the right way. And that can be done with an aluminum boat uh, going in and adjusting those sections and then the next time you build one it'll be the new shape. So without a mold already existing, that means you're allowed to make those kind of changes. Mm -hmm. So that's one of them. Maybe just a little background. We started off wanting a totally customized boat, which is very expensive. And we looked at a few other boats that we might be able to customize but they still weren't close enough to what we wanted. And then we found the Orion 49. The Ankhausen Brothers, or Ink Sail, has just taken over the design of that boat. And we wanted to work with them to develop the changes that would suit our needs and the needs we think of. Those people that want to go sailing in retirement and um, just want comforts and yet security and strength and improve performance over our previous boats. Yeah, the idea is to be able to cruise to high latitudes, to cross tough oceans and get involved in storms occasionally, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to deal with ice, but still to be able to go into the shallow draft uh, locations that we've always enjoyed in the tropics. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, aluminum allowed us to do that and the Orion was closest enough to that to start with. Yeah. It also had the pilot house whereas this is a pilot saloon you can see out the windows and see uh, the view around but you can't see forward to steer so you can't actually do passages helming mm -hmm. from down here. Mm -hmm. So it's it's great to have the views but you can't go on a passage from down here. Yeah, well, so, something we always miss. We own three southerly yachts the 42, uh, 49, and the 480. And uh, it just was have. close enough, but but not quite. We love, yeah. you know, having the view of the raised salon, uh, but we really couldn't feel safe. Yeah, so piloting. the Orion, so, mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt you, honey. No, go ahead. So the Orion has got a pilot saloon. So it's higher than this and you can see straight out over the deck. So you can do a watch, but there's also a small saloon table up there that you can enjoy lunch sitting inside looking at ice flows going by or tropical uh, scenes as well. So the customizability and the strength of an aluminum hull were the two biggest attractors for us to vote for an aluminum boat. Aren't you worried about corrosion with a metal boat? Yeah, we've been asked that yeah. quite a lot. And honestly, that was a concern we always had about yeah. aluminum before we really started to investigate having an aluminum boat. Yeah, and the truth is that living on a, any kind of cruising boat, you have lots of different metals on a boat. And metals are the problem where you're worried about electrolytic con corrosion between two different kinds of metals. Almost all boats have stainless steel propeller shafts and bronze propeller. So you've got two different metals right there. Then you have uh, different metals in rudder shafts, uh, different metals in seacocks and uh, fittings. So you're always dealing with some kind of different metals and an aluminum boat just adds the hull into that mix uh, with the benefits that you get from aluminum. That's the cost you have now a little bit more metal to protect. And it's protected in the same way as you would protect the prop shaft or the uh, propeller and you will now have to protect also the hull by putting anodes on that are going to be the sacrificial thing that will first corrode before the hull does. Mm -hmm. So that has been done for years as we've run into lots of different aluminum boats that are uh, in their 30s and 40 year old boats and they're still sailing and they still look good. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely doable when done properly and uh, done with the right hull, the right methods and the right uh, methods of connecting everything knowledgeable people who know how to build aluminum boats mm -hmm. and that's what you need to get started. Below the water line you want an epoxy coating and then sacrificial anodes will protect the prop shaft. The hull will be isolated from the seawater by the epoxy coating on the bottom of the hull and then uh, above the water line you can either paint it uh, or you can just leave the metal bare because the seawater was not going to corrode the aluminum Modern aluminum sailboats use a 5000 series aluminum which is made for marine use and will protect itself as soon as the seawater exposed to the boat. Uh, the hull immediately oxidizes with a thin coat of oxide which acts as a protector and stops it from oxidizing any further. Yes, oh, so some people have also asked what kind of aluminum is the Orion hull built with? So basically there's a 5000 series, uh, which I believe is 5083 is the actual number for the plates that they use to weld the hull together. Yeah, so the 5000 series uh, is the best option to protect an aluminum boat and uh, get the best long wearing uh, protection and resistance to corrosion and seawater environment. So we've had a few questions too. Are you going to do your sail away weeks on the new boat? And yes, that is part of the plan. So to start with, what's the sail away week? Yeah, uh, these are weeks that we run every, a few weeks every year where we invite people on board. In this case, because we're between boats at the moment, we've been chartering interesting boats. So check the website for uh, the sail away week schedule. We've just organized uh, Voyage 520 Catamaran for a couple of weeks, February and March. And we've done that for many years and it's always a great time. It's such a beautiful place to sail and a great place to introduce your mate to sailing if the lifestyle is new or just to get experience with chartering. You're on board with us for the whole week. We practice all the things that you want to build your skills in. Like Not tying, splicing, yeah. rope handling, boat handling. 
uh, managing the sail dock, trim. sail trim, and docking. Yeah, and it's just really fun to sail such a great big boat and uh, yeah. have a good time with like-minded friends. So yes, we also did, we'll be doing that with the new boat. This year we also did a sail away week on a traditional Dutch barge in the Dutch canals mm -hmm. and out in the Wadden Sea. That was yeah. really a lot of fun. And then we also did a French canal Mm -hmm. a couple of weeks on a canal barge which is fun too yes. so the sailing weeks are a lot of fun and we will do them with the new boat mm -hmm. okay yeah. why did you choose a boat builder in the netherlands mm -hmm. and has it basically the same question as was asked again has it been difficult to work uh, with has it been difficult to work in holland has also been asked mm -hmm. so what would you say how would oh, you summarize that, that? it's been a joy um, first of all, the language isn't a problem for us. Everyone speaks English yeah. very well, and so that made it easier. Uh, the Dutch have an excellent reputation for metal boats, not just aluminum boats, but definitely for aluminum boats. But we just felt very comfortable, and we yeah. found the boat we wanted in the Netherlands. Uh, it's very easy for us to fly from home to get here. The Dutch say what they think, so it's very easy to... <laughs> to communicate even you know beyond just the fact that they speak English so well yeah they do say what they what they think and that's been easy help it's been easier to talk about the options that we're looking at for mm -hmm. the boat and the things that we want we can say it and they will say they don't think it's a good idea or they really wish we would mm -hmm. do something else or right. or yes it's a good idea and we're gonna go ahead and and you know that they're not just saying that they they say something they mean it that's been great. Yeah, and, and really at the level It's not taken personally either. It's just we're communicating. Yeah. What about this? What about that? I don't think that's a good idea. And they're not afraid to tell you and to talk about why. So it's just made it very easy. Yeah. And at the level of communication, it's been uh, really everybody speaks English. There's so few people who don't. All of the, even the shop workers, the guys who work in the factory, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who don't ha normally have anything to do with customers when we're around there a lot filming and setting up the cameras. They all speak uh, English at a level I wish I was so good in mm, any other language. Yeah, really. So. And we just enjoy the countryside. I mean, it's a pleasure to go there and, you know, check up on the boat because we like to be in the place Well, I think as well. It, it, the reason we like being in the place is because most of the Netherlands is so tied to the sea just because <laughs> they're right. literally underwater if it wasn't for their the way of dealing with the dikes and the water. Mm -hmm. So they're very much a water-based people. Yeah. And the area, there's so many areas of peat places where they're building boats and they have a marine heritage that when they need new workers to work, they've already got a mm -hmm. knowledgeable base of people ready to yeah. to go to work yeah. in these factories at a very high level of, of building. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's been Everyone the other reason that we wanted to build comfortable there. with boats yeah. at all levels, yeah. So she's going to be amazing. We're really yeah. excited about her. There's a bunch of work still to go. Um, right now the hull is nearly finished completion and should be leaving uh, the shop in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. The and aluminum then, shop. That, sorry, yes, to leave mm -hmm. the aluminum shop in the next few weeks. Then they go to the paint shop and get the epoxy and stuff down on the bottom and uh, as much paint as we're putting on the deck. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then into the finishing yard where all the interiors put in, all the systems are done all the cabinetry, wiring, wiring and the plumbing yeah, connecting the tanks. The tanks will already be finished before it gets there because they're integral tanks mm -hmm. uh, and all the other systems and everything. So that should be done by the next July is the plan. We're crossing our fingers for that. Mm -hmm. We will be over working on that and reporting back on more systems. Yeah. So we'll do more videos talking about systems such as the powertrain, which we're really excited about because we're doing a hybrid electric drive and hybrid engine for the first time on any boat we've owned. We're really excited about that. Mm -hmm. So we got lots more videos coming up. Yes, so thank you everyone for your comments, for sharing. Um, we're gonna try and do more of these Q and A's. Uh, people seem to enjoy them and we certainly do. Yeah. Um, but because we have such a broad audience, uh, the questions that we'll be answering are from our membership site, which is on Patreon, Distant Shores TV on Patreon. And um, th we have all kinds of levels of membership and special events and tutorials and so on. So it's very fun to join. It's a great community. Um, and we welcome you to take a look at that. And uh, maybe we'll get your question up in the next Q&A. Okay. See you next time, yeah, everybody. Yeah, have a good one. Fair winds. Bye.
All going well, our Holland deck will be completed in November and moved to the paint shop, leaving space to build the next Orion 49 or 54. We've given a lot of input on the Anxail Orion and are keen to help other sailors get going on their own expedition sailing adventures. For more information, check the link in the description below. We've got upcoming videos planned on rig design, power systems, interior layout, and more. Throw a comment below with your suggestions or thoughts. Thanks for watching!